Hey everyone, you can tell that today we're going to talk about the anatomic regions, which has been recently added to T7. I know I included this in the previous lesson, but if you remember, I did not go over all the body regions in detail. I think I only talk about two or three as an example. Two things that really kind of prompted me to go over all the body regions today. First of all, a student asked me to go over this. Uh, since there are a lot of terms, and, and it's kind of hard to remember everything. And the second, I learned from a student who recently took T7, and she did get a question about one of the body regions on the test. So there is a chance that, you know, you may see questions about the anatomic regions on T. So today, let's go over all the body regions together. And again, I recommend that you um, use your own body as a reference. So once we get to a term, uh, try to find it, try to locate it on your own body. And this will really help you remember all the different terms. Okay, now one important thing is that some terms are specifically for the anterior body and the other terms are for the posterior body. So even though you are looking at the same body part, so for example, the knee, right? there will be two terms to describe the anterior part of the knee, which is a patella, and then the posterior part of the knee, which is popliteal. So that's kind of important thing to keep in mind and make sure you know that, you know, one body part may have two different terms depending on whether you're looking at the front of the body or the back of the body. Today, I'm going to go over the terms that are used as Okay, not the noun. So, all right, so let's just start with the head. So cranial refers to the head area. Now you may see another term that also refers to the head region, and that term is cephalic. All right, so this also refers to the head. All right, the face is facial, and ocular refers to the eye. Now, if you see orbital, this actually refers to the bony socket of the eye, right? If you touch, you know, the area around your eye, you can feel that bony socket. So that's orbital. And the buckle, that refers to the cheek area, right, right here. And then ear is otic. So when you see otic, you need to remember that refers to the ear. And the nasal refers to the nose, right? This is um, a pretty common word, right? Nasal spray, that means you're going to spray into your nasal cavity, into your nose. All right, cervical, that refers to the neck, right? We have cervical vertebrae, right? That's the vertebrae that you're going to find in the neck area. Now, let's move to the left. So this is the last part of the head area. This is the mouth. And aro refers to the mouth. Oh, actually, we missed uh, one more area in the head, and that's the chin. So mental refers to the chin area. Uh, axillary is the armpit area right here. And brachial refers to the arm. And that's going to be the upper part of the arm. Right? Usually when you see arm in anatomy, that refers to that upper half of the all right, now for the arm, the term for the anterior and the posterior is the same. So this anterior arm region is referred to as brachial, and the back of the arm is also brachial. So for the arm, it's the same term, whether it's the anterior or posterior. Anticubical right here, this refers to the area between the arm and the forearm. Right? So if you look at here, that's the forearm, which is antibrachial, antibrachial. And the area between, let me use a different color, and the area between the arm and the forearm, right? That's kind of where uh, usually blood is drawn, right? That's the anticubital area right there. And then keep going down the arm. Um, carpal, that refers to the wrist area. Carpal tunnel syndrome, right? You guys probably know that disease. So that's uh, something wrong with the wrist. And then going to the hand, pollux, 
is the big thumb. And then digital is for all the digits, all, all the fingers of the hand, right? So digital does include the thumb, but we do have a special term for the thumb, which is palette. And then the palm of the hand is palmar. So that's palmar. Now let's move to the right side on this anterior view. We have thoracic. Thoracic refers to the chest area. And then we have memory. Memory refers to the breast region. Memory here. We have abdominal. So abdominal refers to the anterior body trunk region, inferior to the ribs, right? If the ribs are here, then this is going to be the abdominal area, right? Inferior to, that means below. So that's the area below the ribs. And next term is umbilical. Umbilical is also known as navel. So that's where your, your belly button is located. And then coxal refers to the hip area. So that's coxal. Now going down, we have a pelvic. So pelvic is the area here, right, which is pelvis. And the inferior to the pelvis is the groin area, right? So this area refer is referred to as inguinal. So that's inguinal. The last one is the pubic area, right? Uh, pubic right here. So this refers to pubis and basically where the genitals are present. Okay. All right. Now, looking at the different parts of the leg, the thigh is known as ephemeral. ephemeral. Now, for the thigh, it's just like the arm. The term is the same whether you're looking at the anterior or posterior parts. So this is known as ephemeral. And then the back of the thigh is also known as femoral right here. This is also ephemeral. All right, now inferior to the thigh is the knee area. And then we mentioned earlier the front of the knee, the kneecap, that's patella. And then the back of the knee is popliteal right here. Now going down to the leg, so the front of the leg is known as crural. So right here, that's crural. Now the back of the leg, that's an area known as the calf. That's sural. So that's the region here, the posterior of the leg. You need to be able to differentiate the two terms, right? Calf, that's sural. That's the posterior. And then crural, that's the anterior. So this is how I remember it. The two words are very similar, right? So you can remember, oh, these two similar words refer to the same part of the body, but different sides. One is front, one is back. Crudo starts with a C, right? C comes before S in the alphabetical order. So crudo, who comes first, is going to be the anterior part, the front part. And then sural, S comes later, so that's going to be the posterior or the back part of the leg. Now moving down, the ankle area is a tarsal. Oops. The ankle area is the tarsal, so that's going to be you know, over here. And then for the entire foot, it's known as a pedal, right? If you pedal bicycles, you're using your feet to, to propel the bicycle, right? Or pedestrians. Pedestrians are people who are walking on their feet, right? So pedal refers to the foot. Now we also have a digital uh, for all the toes, right? But again, we have a special term for the big toe, which is hollux. Hollux. Okay, now we're going to transition to the posterior view. So for the head, whether you're looking at the front or the back, you know, the entire head is still referred to as cephalic, uh, which is I mentioned here or cranial, right? They both refer to the head. And then for the neck, um, front and the back are the same. Both are cervical. Oh, that reminds me, I forgot, to, I think I missed the one head area and that's your forehead. So that's known as the frontal area. We haven't talked about the shoulder yet, right? So the shoulder point is known as acromial. 
So this right here, that's acromial. Again, acromial refers to the point of the shoulder. Dorsal, that refers to the back of the body, right? So that post posterior region, that's dorsal. And we mentioned the brachial, right? That refers to the arm. Whether it's the posterior or anterior, that's brachial. Olacronum, this is something different. So this is for the back of the elbow. Okay. The front of the elbow is known as anticubital, right there. But the back of the elbow is known as olacronum here. Lumbar, so lumbar refers to a, a lower back right here between the ribs and the hips. So that's the lower back or loin area. Sacrum or sacral, that refers to, to the region between the hips, right? The hips are here. So the sacral area is in between the hip. And the manus or manual, that refers to the hand. If you do something manually, right, you probably use your hand to do it, right? So that's manual. Gluteal, that's a pretty major body area. That refers to the buttocks right here, right, the buttocks. So that's gluteal. And you remember the muscles in this region will have gluteus maximus, right? That's the biggest gluteal muscle right here. Okay. All right, now for the thigh, we talked about this earlier, right? The posterior of the thigh is still known as femoral. So there's no change for that. And then the back of the knee, top detail. And then the back of the leg. So when we say the leg, it kind of refers to the lower leg. That's the calf area. Okay? And the term for that is suro. Suro is the back. So again, kuro is the front of the leg. And the suro is the back of the leg, which is the calf. Calcaneal, that refers to the heel of the foot. Calcaneal. And then plantar. Plantar refers to the sole of the foot. That's a plantar. I think that's pretty much all the terms you need to know to, uh, for T7. And I know it looks like there is a lot of information, but again, if you can just go over all the terms a few times, uh, using your body as a reference, as a model, um, say a word, say the, say the term, and um, point to the correct region on your body. You know, if you do that a few times, then all the terms will become a lot easier to you. And you can make some flashcard to kind of help you get ready for that um, tease situation, right? Because when you're nervous, it might be hard to remember a term or differentiate two similar terms. So you can use flashcards or uh, a diagram without all the terms, just empty diagram. And then you can see um, whether you can identify a body region. Okay, now let's look at some practice questions. Question number one. This question is about the correct order of the anatomical subregions in the posterior view of the lower limb. Now the lower limb refers to the leg. So this question really kind of asks you to identify the different subregions on the posterior of the entire leg, including the thigh, the knee, and then the, the leg. All right, so let's look at um, all the answer choices. Now, first of all, if this is about the posterior view, then all the terms that refer to the anterior aspects of the leg can be eliminated, right? Crural refers to the anterior aspect of the leg. So you can eliminate answers C and D. All right, so let's look at A. So you have to arrange these subregions in order. So from proximal, that means this closest to the body trunk, to distal, away from the body trunk. All right, so first part is going to be the thigh. 
which is referred to as the femoral region. And then the knee, the back of the knee is popliteal. And then the calf, which is referred to as the sural region. And then the heel, calcaneus. The sole of the foot, the bottom of the foot, that's plantar. So A is the correct answer. Okay, next question. To answer this question, you need to know where kidneys are located. They are located in the lower back area. So the pain is probably going to be felt in the lower back region. This is the area of the back between the ribs and hips. So that's the correct answer. Abdominal, this is a pretty big area, right? This is basically your belly, which is the area inferior to the ribs, right below the ribs. Thoracic, that's the chest area. Um, so you can find the lungs and the heart in the thoracic cavity. Now, inguinal refers to the groin area, right? So um, that's not where you find the kidneys, right? So the correct answer is D. Okay, next question. Which of the following pairs incorrectly corresponds to the anterior and posterior aspects of the same body part? Select all that apply. All right, so let's go over all the answer options. A, cervical, that refers to the neck, right? And the acromial, that's the shoulder point. Uh, so they're not even the same body part. Um, but since it's incorrectly paired, that will be the answer for this question. So A is a correct answer. Okay, B, brachial and anti-brachial. Let me draw the arm real quick. Now, I forgot to mention that, that in anatomy and physiology, a lot of the textbooks will refer to the commonly known as the arm as the upper limb. And that's because the upper part of the upper limb, which is this area, is known as the arm. And then the other part is known as the forearm, and they have different anatomical terms. Okay. So for the arm, it's referred to as a brachial, and the forearm, that's anti-brachial. All right, so they do refer to different body parts. Both the arm and the forearm, it's the same term whether you're looking at the, the anterior or the posterior aspect, right? So the uh, anterior of the arm is brachial, but the posterior of the arm is also known as brachial. All right, so B is not correctly paired, so it's also a correct answer for this question. C, antecubital and olecranon. So antecubital refers to this area between the arm and the forearm. And basically, that's the anterior part of the elbow. And olecranon, that's the posterior part of the elbow. So this is actually correctly paired, right? They refer to the same body part, but one is the anterior and the other one is the posterior aspect. All right, D, femoral and gluteal. Femoral refers to the thigh, right? Um, again, whether you're talking about the anterior or posterior, they're both referred to as the femoral region. And gluteal, that refers to the buttocks. Right? So we're looking at two different body parts. So that's not correctly paired, so it's a correct answer. Now the last one, sural and fibula. So sural, if you look at the leg, which is known as the lower limb. So similar to the upper limb, I didn't really clarify um, on that. So when we talk about the 
leg, we usually refer to that, the whole leg, as the lower limb. And that's because we refer to the upper part of the lower limb as the thigh, and then the lower part as the leg. If you refer to the entire structure, you want to call it lower limb. Because if you just say leg, you know, it tends to get confused, which, you know, I did in this video, but I probably shouldn't. Um, so I should have um, clarified that we have upper limb and lower limb. And then the arm and the, the leg refer to part of the limb. All right, now, suro refers to the anterior aspect of the leg. So that's a suro. And I don't think I talk about fibula. So fibula refers to the lateral aspect of the leg. So that will be the fibula region. All right, now what will be the posterior aspect of the leg? That's called crew, which is basically the calf area. So that's also an answer. So for question three, you have four answers, A, B, D, and all right, let's move on to the last question. Okay, basically this question asks you to identify the inguinal region on this diagram. So where is the inguinal region? It's the junction between the lower abdomen and then the inner thigh, right? So this area over here, that's the inguinal region. All right, so E is the correct answer. What is A? That's the neck area referred to as the cervical region, cervical. And B is the abdomen, right? That's the abdominal region. And the C is the hip right here. That's known as the coxal region. And then D is the pelvis, right? It's re referred to as pelvic. Right? So that's all the questions I have for the anatomical regions. Hopefully this provided you with a chance to go over all the important other regions and all those terms so that you can remember them better on the T's. All right, good luck everyone. Happy studying. I will see you next time.